I'm here today to uh, read uh, some kind of piece of funny poetry that would have to do with waffles. But uh, since there's a captive audience and there's something that's kind of been weighing on me recently, um, rather than read something funny, uh, I brought something else. I hope that's okay. It'll take about five minutes. Um, and I thank you for your attention. This is something that just kind of means a lot to me. Uh, this is a short essay called The Shameful History of the Eradication of the Waffle from American Poetry Textbooks. The American Academy has been unkind to the waffle. Starting in the 1950s, anti-waffle hysteria, the famous Belgian boycott you've probably heard about, led to the rewriting of many poetry textbooks to expunge any mention of waffles. Ever since, students have grown up without knowledge of the crucial role waffles have played in American poetry. Take for example, or poetry in general, I should say, take for example the person many consider to be the greatest writer in the English language, William Shakespeare, the Bard's sonnets are now taught as love letters he wrote to an unknown woman or man whose identity has been lost to us. But how many of us realize that the original text of his sonnets makes clear the object of his affections? Here are the actual opening lines from Sonnet 18. Shall I compare thee to a summer waffle? Thou art as golden and as fluffy. <laughs> or this from Sonnet 130. My mistress' eyes are nothing like waffles. Syrup is far more amber than her lips red. If whipped cream be white, why then her breasts are done. <laughs> Perhaps no American poet is better known and loved than Robert Frost, which makes the later editing of his work all the more shameful. Imagine how the course of American history might have changed if people knew that Frost originally wrote, two waffles diverged on my plate, and sorry I could not eat both and be overly full, long I stood and looked at one as lovingly as I could, to where it lay in a pool of maple syrup, then ate the other just as fair, and having perhaps the better hue, because it had been toasted slightly longer. This wasn't Frost's only lyric about the queen of breakfast foods. Consider the following. Whose waffles these are, I think I know. His house is in the village, though. He will not see me stopping here to eat his waffles before I go. To my mind, this tragedy is made even harder to bear because things could have been so much different. Waffles cut across the artificial boundary lines of class, gender, and ethnicity. Emily Dickinson, writing in the mid-1800s in her home in Amherst, Massachusetts, penned the following, presumably at the breakfast table, Because I could not stop for waffles, they kindly stopped for me. I ate them sitting by myself, beneath a chestnut tree. Jumping forward in time more than half a century and also moving several hundred miles, we find ourselves in Harlem during the Renaissance, when poet Langston Hughes turned to his notebook and wrote, Hold fast to waffles, for if waffles die, life is a broken-winged bird that cannot fly. Hold fast to waffles, for when waffles go, life is a barren field, frozen with snow. One final example, and perhaps the most pernicious of them all. William Carlos Williams' famous poem, This Is Just to Say, does contain a reference to food in the version we've come to know. Sadly, however, the food in question is not the one Williams intended. Recent scholarship has shown that the Plum Lobby, a.k.a. Big Plum, plotted with the anti-waffle cabal to revise the poem in modern editions of Williams' work. Here, finally, I'm proud to restore the original text. This is just to say I have eaten the waffles that were in the toaster oven, and which you were probably saving for breakfast. Forgive me, they were delicious, so sweet and hot. In closing, I'm proud to stand here today with the members of Auburn University's Association of Visual Artists. They've chosen to take a stand for the truth, even in the face of pressure tactics from the shadowy leadership of the deep-pocketed anti-waffle community. I hope April 5th, 2013 is remembered as the day when proud patriots stood up and demanded that waffles be recognized for their contributions to literature. Someday when my sons ask, Daddy, what did you do to help the waffles? I'll be able to look back on this day and say, sons, I stood up and was counted. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.